We have been traveling the rich fertile lands of Kenya, far and wide, across the highlands and lowlands of this beautiful country, talking to farmers wherever we go. We want to give them the help and knowledge they need to improve their farming methods, increase their income, and turn around their farms into good business for the future. Join us and our experts on this journey and share their families' experiences as they make the changes. Karibu to Shamba Ship Up Safari. This is a show that advises you on how to make your shamba a better shamba for you, your crops, your animals, and your family. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. We are here in Mahoho at a village called Inguhu, 12 kilometers from Kakamega town. We are in a farm where 16 members of one family live. Let's find out who runs this shamba. Vincent, yes. 16 members of the same family in this homestead. Yes. So how many of those are yours? Uh, in my family, yes. I have two children, and then I have my father uh -huh. and my mother, uh -huh. and I have my brothers and sisters. Okay. And of course, some of my brothers have married, uh -huh. whereby so, I live with my in-laws uh -huh. here. And they all depend on you. Yes, all of them are under my management. How big is your shamba? My shamba is one acre. One acre? Yes. Wow. What do you plant? On this one acre, for, on, on one acre, mm -hmm. I plant the local vegetables, mm -hmm. the nini, the black nightshade. As well as crops, Vincent has two heifers, some pottery and also some beehives. So now in your daily you know, running of the farm, what are the main problems that you go through? Uh, the first and foremost, on the farm, during the planting season or during management of the local vegetables, yes. the major problem is water. Water, yes. Then, secondly, I have a problem with moles. Ah. The 11 chicken I have, we reside with them in one house whereby I need someone, if someone can help me, Yes. At least to have... So, so you're staying in the same place with the chickens? Yes. <laughs> Eleven of them? Yes. Plus your kids and wife? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, Vincent, we have set camp here. Yes. We'll get you experts. Yeah, we'll, we'll help where we can with the water, with the, with the vegetables, yes. with, the, with the heifers, so that we live here, making the shamba looks better than we found it. Okay, Vincent? Yes, I'll be All grateful. Right. Vincent's father has handed the management of the shamba over to Vincent, but he still helps with the crops and looking after all the grandchildren. Let's meet some of the family. Got some little kids here cooking for us a meal. At least going to be some shares. Well, it's a busy farm, I would say. Oh yes, oh yes, lots to cover. We have to cover the bees and... Um, mm -hmm. Vegetables. Oh yes, the vegetables and uh, pottery. Water. Oh, the water system, oh man, mm -hmm. there's still a lot to be done about that. And don't forget there are those nasty moles. Let me go deal with the bees and you go deal with the chickens and then we'll meet time. up later. Good luck with yours. Yeah, bye. Vincent sets to work straight away to shape up his chamber. Vincent. Yes. Hi, oh, yes. What are you doing? I'm, dr I'm trying to draw hey, yeah. of a poultry house. So, what is this? These are the, these are the dimensions. These yeah. are on the roof of the structure. Uh -huh. Then this is the door. Mm -hmm. And this is how the partitioning should be done. Okay. Wait a minute. So, you know about much about this so you can build? Yes. By the way, I'm a carpenter. Oh, really? Okay. So, your brother is going to help you? Yeah, yes. of course we are. Also a carpenter. You're also a carpenter? Yes. yes. Oh, this is really nice. Yes. Right. Okay, so now maybe we should go and check for a place where we can actually build this. Do you have yeah. an idea? Yes. Why yes. don't you show me around? Vincent shows me a space big enough where he can build a chicken house to the correct specifications recommended by Kenchik. 
He hopes to have 50 chickens, which means the new house must be 10 feet by 5 feet, secure from predators and have plenty of ventilation. So what kind of chickens would you love? I would like to have the Ken Brew. Oh, Ken Brew? Yes. Why is that? They're, dual, they're of dual purpose. They're of dual purpose? and yes. so you and can. Uh -huh. they're fit for the family, so to, to sustain the needs of the family. Oh, great, sustain the needs of the family. And again, so you can have the eggs, you can also sell them for meat. For meat, yeah. Oh, that's, and you have a big family. Yes. Okay, so that's a great idea. We get started on the new chicken house. There must be ventilation on the two long sides. There should be protection from predators and from cold wind. And also, not forgetting a disinfectant foot bath at the entrance. First, the plot is measured correctly and the foundation holes are dug 20 inches into the ground, ready for the wooden post to build the frame. It's very busy here, as you can see, um, but it's very important to use wood preservative so that doodles don't eat into your wood. While work continues, I introduce Vincent to Mrs. Diana Asiligua, who is a beekeeping specialist with nearly 20 years' experience. Diana has been taking a look at Vincent's effort at beekeeping. Now, Diana, you've been going around and you've seen his beehives and all that. I'll be asking you later what you think of them. But first, Vincent, could you just tell us what problems you've been going through with your beekeeping? Okay, on my beekeeping project, mm -hmm. One, first of all, it is poor timing, mm -hmm. and of course the beehive, the hives I had, mm -hmm. were of, of low quality, yes. and therefore with, the, with that poor timing, mm -hmm. it also made me have low harvests. Mm -hmm. That's why I, insi I insisted on having, having more knowledge yes. on how to manage and handle the bees. You've walked around and you've seen Vincent's beehives. What do you think in general what you saw? Vincent, yes. the hives are not supposed to be put on the floor. Yes. They are supposed to be suspended on a goal. And this goal uh, is for three posts, strong posts yes. of eight feet. Yes. So we dig in the two posts two feet yes. in the ground, and then we leave six feet. Yes. So this six feet, six feet is where we are going to suspend the hives. Diana explains in detail how the new bee apiary should be built. First, a section of the chamber that has some shade from the trees has to be fenced off. Vincent has helped putting in posts and a wire fence to protect the hives from predators. Vincent's old hives are in a very bad condition. Diana shows Vincent some new hives and explains about trapping. Trapping is a process to attract the bees to enter a new hive. Vincent, yes. this is the Langstroth hive. Yes. The commercial beekeeping. Yes. You get me? Yes. So this is the brooder. Always a brooder has 10 frames. Yes. This is what we call a frame. The very frame has a comb starter yes. or a wax. Wax is to attract bees three kilometers square. Yes. And so the trapping begins. The brooders are taken to be left in a safe place. Let's hope the bees come and make it their new home. It seems we'll have to wait and see. Between 12 yes. to 36 hours, yes. one of the hives will be having bees. So what we have done is just trapping. Trap. It's on the trapping side. Okay. Now from here, no work done on these hives when the bees are in during daytime. It has to be at night. So transferring it from here to the apiary, it has to be from 6.30 p.m. Yes. onwards. So we have to wait until evening to do any more work on the new apiary. Now, what is Naomi helping with? I'm talking to Sheila, Vincent's sister, about a household problem. So Sheila, you don't have electricity, right? We don't have electricity. No. So what do you use? We usually use the, the paraffin lamp, especially the small one. And how is it? It's very smoky and it's very difficult for this small child to read. Mm -hmm. And also it's very difficult to, to cook using the, the, the smoky lamps. And it's uh -huh. also difficult walking around and watching all around the farm. I call a friend of Shamba Shape Up, Paul, a delight. I'm sure delight will find something to help Vincent's father read to the grandchildren. In the meantime, Vincent and Tony are trying to tackle a problem underground. The malls have invaded, and uh, of, of course, 
the there are no yields mm -hmm. as far as the potatoes are contained. So you woke up one morning and found all your potatoes are gone. Yes, <laughs> it it is not a one day a one day realization. Uh -huh. it, it takes time for you to realize that now everything is gone because uh -huh. whenever you go for a harvest, uh -huh. you find tunnels of the malls oh, yes. eating have eaten all the potatoes and nothing is found. Good. Now we've got something for you right here. Yes. You see, this may look just like an ordinary pipe. Yes. But it's an improvised mole catcher. Yes. Mm, improvised. By improvised, I mean you can even make it yourself, you know. Just get a simple pipe. Yes. As you can see here. Yes. And then get a starter. Yes. An opener. Yes. And a stopper. Yes. You know? The mole gets in, then it locks itself in. Yes. And then you wake up in the morning and find your mole inside here. Okay. It can't move. Right? Yes. But first I think we need to find the the mole tunnels. Good, good. Let's go mole hunting. We find one of the tunnels and dig into it to place the trap and cover it over with soil. So Vincent, what are you going to do when you wake up in the morning and find inside this trap a mole? What are you going to do? I'll be very happy. You'll be very happy. Because uh -huh. I'll, ha I'll have caught my enemy, Good. Of, of, of which uh -huh. is a great obstacle to farming. Vincent's family was facing problems using kerosene lamps. They are bad for your eyes, expensive to use, and can be very dangerous, especially with lots of small children around. But D-Light have sent a solution. Sheila. Yeah. I brought you something. What is it? Um, here. Solo lamp. I can see it. Nice. Okay. So uh, no more smoke in the kitchen, you know, and you can walk around it with it in the night. Yeah. Vincent can do that yeah, in the farm. Nice. And grandfather can read the children, right? Wow. That's yeah, and good. all you need to do, you have to keep it out in the sun so it gets enough sun. Yeah. Yeah, and it actually is very good because it can stay from 4 to 12 hours. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The solar panel for the light needs to be powered in the sun each day and then it will be charged, giving you free light to use to up to 12 hours. It is not dangerous. And so Vincent's father can safely read with all the grandchildren. Speaking of being safe, it's time to get on with building the new apiary. Just after six, which means the bees are not cranky. So we are, we are kind of safe now because it's getting to dark, but um, we are safe again because we've got Diana, the expert beekeeper, who is explaining to Vincent how to build gold posts, where they're going to hang the beehives. Let's watch. To build the goal for the hives, the holes must be two feet deep for the posts. Wood preservative must be used on the poles to protect them against termites. Stones are added around the pole and then a mixture of sand and concrete to keep the post securely in the ground. Wow, it seems so busy here, Diana. Any last word of advice to Vincent? You see this bottle, this is Vincent Misigo Shivaji. Vincent Misigo Shivaji. Together with his even conduct. Uh. So I will <laughs> show you how to process and pack. Yes. So that your honey will be packed as it is. Yes. Now you will start now supplying your honey even to supermarkets. Oh, so, selling so. to people locally. Uh. Diana, Vincent and his team carry on to try and complete the new apiary before nightfall. We've started a lot of projects here. Oh yes, we are dealing with the chicken house, the bee apiary, and we are hoping to catch some moles. But there's still a lot of work to do here on Shamba Shepherd. The Shamba Shepherd team are just outside Kakamega town and we are on Vincent's farm. He looks after 16 members of his family and has several enterprises on his farm. And he wants expert advice. Let's see what else we can shape up on his shamba. Bee expert Diana Siligua has been helping Vincent set up a new bee apiary. His old hives were not very good. Vincent and his team have been building it while the brooder hives have been attracting the bees. Under the strict guidance of Diana and using safety clothing, last night the hives were taken to their new home. And if Vincent follows Diana's instructions, he'll become a better beekeeper and produce more honey. Vincent wants to expand his chicken business and provide for his large family. The specifications for the new chicken shed we are building are recommended by Kenchik, who will come and see Vincent later for an inspection. 
Once the main structure has been completed, there are many very important tasks to complete before it is ready. The whole chicken shed must have a light spray with disinfectant. Five cupfuls of ominside are used for every 20 liters of water. Vincent wears protective clothing, boots, dust coat, mask and goggles while he sprays the walls, ceiling and floor. The disinfectant water is also put into the foot bath. Next, the wood shavings are put on the floor. This will help soak up the feces. The new brooder is fixed inside. This will keep the chicks safe. They like crowding in the corners, which can cause injury and death. And so the brooder must be round and be able to expand as the chickens grow. A small jiko is added that will provide the chicks with warmth. Now, it's time for the drinkers and the feeding tray for the chicks to be placed in. Water for the chicks, but not just water, vitamin water. Clean fresh water is very important for poultry. And we are using unga food that gives chicks a good start in life. And now it's time to do the curtains. The curtains are made from old seed bags that Vincent had on his farm. Friend of Chamber Shape Up, Dr. Moses Owino comes to inspect Vincent's new chicken house. So Dr. Owino, have you done everything you asked? Yeah, from uh, what I can see, yeah. you've done it well. And especially the curtain, you've done it nicely. Because oh. yes. uh, it's put on the outside. Yes. Right. And when the curtain's on, on the outside, yes. it breaks the wind. Okay. and uh, prevents the cold yes. from getting into the poultry house. Yes. Again, you made it in such a way that uh, you can open it from the top, not yes. from the bottom. Okay. Opening from the top yes. allows in fresh air, yes. but prevents cold. So that was good. Oh, okay. so we can get the chickens now? Yeah, we can get them, yes. Okay, great, let's go. There are 50 Canberra chicks, all just one day old. We carefully place them in a new brooder. This will be dual purpose to lay eggs and provide meat. Now the only thing you have to monitor mm -hmm. the temperatures. Yes. If you see they are crowding together, especially under the jiko, just to know that it's cold, you add more heat. Yes. When they are running away from the jiko, going to the sides and they're not eating and panting, mm -hmm. that means it's too hot. Yes. You open the curtain or you remove the jiko. Uh, also monitor the feed. Yes. Once they finish the feed, you keep adding. Yes. And water. Okay. Fresh, clean water every day. Okay. The other thing is maintain hygiene. Yes. Use the foot bath. Yes. Wash the drinkers. Yes. And also make sure your gumboots are clean. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Great advice, isn't it? Yeah. So how do you how do you feel? I just feel great. You feel great. Yeah. Doctor Moses and the chicks are happy. But now I have news for Vincent that is not so good. The Shamba Ship Up team had the soil on Vincent Shamba tested at the Crop Nutrition Laboratory Services in Nairobi. Vincent, I've yes. I've talked to the experts and we took your soil for testing and I'm afraid. Uh, the results are not very good. Yes. You see, your soil pH is low. Yes. Which means it's acidic. Oh, you have to add lime to it. Yes. And then your phosphorus and potassium is very, very low. Yes. So you need to add fertilizer. Yes. Which has DAP. Yes. Or TSP. TSP. Yes. And you can also use farmyard manure. Yes. To help improve your soil quality. Okay. So, Vincent's soil is acidic. He needs to add lime, which is not expensive and easy to apply. He also needs to add DAP or TSP fertilizer that will improve the quality of the soil and the crops, giving a better harvest and more profit. The family have all been helping to prepare the land as the soil must be fine. One of the crops Vincent plants is a popular local vegetable, black nightshade. Mr. Julius Nyambicha is an agribusiness specialist from the Earth River Mining Company. Right, this is where Vincent wants to plant his black nightshade. So how can you help him? Now, if you look at this part, this is a Mavuno fertilizer. Yes. It's written, it's for green leafy vegetables. It's only used on the green leafy vegetables. Mm -hmm. Leafy vegetables means that we consume the leaves, we yes. eat the leaves. Yes. And therefore this, this fertilizer is tailor-made to make those leaves bigger and enriched. Yes. Okay. 
so that you can be able to have a good harvest. So the Mavuno green leafy vegetables is what you're going to use in planting black nightshade because what we consume in black nightshade are the leaves. You understand me? Yes. Once you've made your trenches, yes. you, you put the fertilizer along and then you mix it with the soil. Okay. Don't put the fertilizer and then put the seed on top directly. Fertilizer has a scorching effect. That seed is not going to germinate if you, if you put it on top of the fertilizer directly. How much land does he need to plant, plant the black nightshade? Bla black nightshade, you can, you can plant even acres and acres. Mm -hmm. That's what we want to encourage our farmers to do. If you think you have an advantage in, in planting black nightshade, yes. plant a lot of it, harvest, sell, and then buy other commodities, other food crops like maize. Yeah. Okay? Ah, then good, you do good. your farming as a business. Yeah. And remember, Keep records. Mm -hmm. Know how much fertilizer you used, know how much you have harvested, and how much profit that you have made. That's how farming is done as a business, okay? Good. So, remember, when planting, make sure your seed does not come in direct contact with the fertilizer, as this will cause scorching and a bad crop. As Vincent is shaping up his shamba, he must also remember to shape up his finances. Losing Guru, a finance expert from FSD, has come to give Vincent some advice explaining how financial record keeping is vital to keep his savings plan on track. Vincent, how is your yes. business doing? Uh, my business is doing well. Yeah. And I think, according to what I'm expecting to be saving, mm. is too little. Mm. And for that case, I need some advice on how to improve my saving. Good. Are you still doing the records of yourself? The records of my sales yeah. is uh, somehow partial, yeah. whereby, whereby I am not very much keen on the record keeping, whereby by the time I intend to do my farming, mm. I need to have a clear record to show, whereby to assess whether it is a profit or a loss. Well, I think that is interesting because, you know, people think that uh, doing records is a bit complex, but yes. really it is not. Yes. And uh, like, like you can see, when you have a business, yes. uh, you can only have three things. Yes. You can either make a profit yes. or you can break even where you are at par yes. or you can make a loss. Yes. And uh, basically what we are doing is to just... Make sure that your farming business, yes. what you put in and what you get out yes. is, 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 is balanced in a way that it favors you. Okay. For example, <coughs> if you want to make a profit and you can look here, yes. you could uh, want to have your sales yes. being higher yes. than your expenses. Yes. Which means whatever you harvest and sell yes. must be higher yes. than the farm inputs, your bar, and everything else that you spend in the business. Yes then that way you'll have made a profit. Good. On the other time, yes. if you have a situation where your sales, yes. what you sell, yes. is equal to the expenses, yes. the input you have put in the farm, yes. your labor and all the costs yes. are equal to the money that you have sold your sales, then basically you're not doing anything. And that is why we, that's what we say, it's break even. Okay. Another situation yes. in business, like I've said, there are other three things, yes. you can make a loss. Where you're making a loss, yes. it means that your sales are much lower yes. than your expenses. So yes. your expenses are higher yes. and your sales are lower. That means you're actually not in business. Why have you come with so many books? Uh, these books? Yes. Uh, books that you will use yes. in your business. Yes. They are simple to keep. They may look many, but they are just step by step. For example, yes. when you make a cash sale yes. in your farm, then you record here. Yes. Again, if you supply yes. somebody, then you can invoice from on the credit. invoice book on credit, yes. But of course, remember, credit has to be minimal. Okay. Again, when you make a delivery, for example, you deliver to the cereal board, yes. you'll make a record of everything that you have delivered and the person receiving yes. must take note and you leave them with a copy. If you have any payments that you make at the farm level, yes. you can use a petty cash for sure. Yes. All this helps you to keep a record and then all that then you process, you process in your cash book. Yes. Where we keep the money, 
coming in yes. and the money going, going out. out and then at the end of the month we'll be able to summarize that a little notebook to yeah. just make note of any other thing that you might come across yes as you carry on on the farm Vincent, like we explained, it's very important yes. to keep your money in a local financial institution. Yes. This will help you to make your money safe yes. because when it's at home, it's not safe. Yes. It will also help you yes. to build a relationship with your financial institution. Yes. And again, will also help you to save because money in the bank is actually safer than when it's at home. It is so important to manage your finances keep good records, and bank your money with a local financial institution. Another problem on Vincent's Jamba was access to water. The ladies make many trips to the river for water to use on the crops and also for cooking and washing. I wonder if they harvest any water. Whoa! Shakes! This is horrible. This cannot hold any water. Jeez, when was this installed here? 1920s, yeah, I've got to get rid of this. Aaron! Who are you, Yote? Aaron is a water technician and is here to help install a water harvesting system which consists of guttering and a water tank. The tank needs to be elevated by two feet and so a water container can be used and water drawn from the tap. The base for the tank is made from bricks and sand, which Vincent already has on his chamber. Once the base is finished, it is left to dry. The next stage is fixing up the gutter room. The roof is measured for the new PVC gutter room, which is rust-proof, durable, and easy to clean. This will be connected to the 1,000-liter water tank. By investing in this system, Vincent will make more money from better crops. It will also be fresh water for the family cooking and washing and will save time for the women who have to go to the river. We've got the guttering ready. Yes. But unfortunately, we don't have any rain. Yeah. I've had around here the sun rain makers. Yes. Are you one of them? Yeah, I think so. You can make rain? Yes. How? We use the bucket test to ensure that the what we have made is actually can actually the water when the rain comes yeah. can actually flow in the in the in the tank. So you want to do the bucket test? Yes. You are a real rainmaker. Yeah. Okay, let's go for it then. Sound of water trickling down the tank. Wow, beautiful. Yeah, I'm a rainmaker. Yeah. What's happening? Well, I just made rain, you know. Now Vincent can have its lots and lots of rainwater. And Vincent can also expand his chicken business. Well, I hope we've left their shamba truly shaped up and that they are very, very happy. Then we need a celebration. We must celebrate. So bye bye. <laughs> Thousands of people are using a simple text 5606 to find out how they can ship up their shamba. You could be one of them. Text 5606 and write the words below to get the latest information. Start texting now.